Hello YouTube, I hope you're doing well. In today's video, we're looking at Code.org's Unit 4, Lesson 3, Part 10. This part asks us to do a few things. It says to run the program to see how it works, make sure to click on all three buttons. So I'm gonna slide my slider up just a little bit so that it runs a little bit more quickly. We'll click run. All right, once it runs through that, if I click on adult ticket, it goes ahead and puts the price of $12.50 and it adds one ticket to the counter. If I click on child ticket, nothing happens. And if I click on senior ticket, same thing, nothing happens. Under the do this, it tells us to add code to make the child and senior buttons work. They should increase the total number of tickets sold and the total money collected. It says use the code for the adult button as a guide. One thing that I want to caution you about is this. It's going to be easy to click show text copy the adult text and paste it in for the child and the senior. I want to encourage you not to do that. That's going to end up robbing you from this experience and it won't aid you in learning this part of the unit. When you're coding your actual program, feel free to do that. It makes sense. But for this, remember, we're learning. We are going to look to this adult section to fill in our child button and our senior button. And the great thing, if you're not in code view, go ahead and go there. But the great thing about the block part of the coding section is that it's all color coded so that it, that helps you with the toolbox. And so you're just dragging in things and feeling comfortable with the different things that you can add to your program. The first thing that I see under the adult button is I see two different comments. I want to encourage you to add that. That's good practice. For when you're coding, that way, if somebody else needs to look over your code or you come back to your code at a future date, it'll help you remember what's going on. And you can find that under the function part of the toolbox. So let's go ahead and add that. And we'll add a second one because we know we're going to do this. We'll just look at the child button first. Now, I told you not to copy and paste. Feel free to copy and paste this comment code because it's literally the same thing. The next thing that I see is that they added a variable. So let's click on the variables tab. And what we're doing is we're setting the variable tickets to be tickets plus one for our counter. So when we click on these things, it will continue to add that up. Let me scroll down. I'm going to do this one right here, the assign X. And I'm going to drag it below my first comment. For my first part, the X section, I want to go ahead and add the word tickets because we're going to use this variable up here. Remember, it starts at zero and we're going to add to it. And then what we want to do is we're going to add two things together. So let's go to our math part of the toolbox. We're going to use the addition and we're going to drop it into this part of the variable adder. For the left hand side of this, we're going to go ahead and type in tickets. And just like in the adult section, we're going to add one. Let's go ahead and add the other variable. So let's go to the variables. We're going to do this one again, assign a variable, and we'll drop that below our second comma. For this one, we're going to update the variable dollars. We're going to do our math part of this. Again, we're just adding. We'll drop that here. And this time we're going to add dollars plus, and it's not going to be adult price for this one. It's going to be child price. So we'll type in child price, capital P. Capitalization does matter. Let's just scroll up and make sure that we use the correct name. And it's this. Now I could have just copied and pasted that had I chosen to do that. And that looks good. So as we're continuing to copy from the one above, we see that we have two things that we need to do. We need to add two different set properties and our play sound is already there. So let's go back to the UI controls. We'll do set properties and we'll drag that underneath. The great thing about the block view is it gives me some drop downs. Of course, if I reset my app, I can hover over different things and I can see what different parts of this app is called, which is going to be helpful. Our set property, we want to copy this one dollars label. And so if we hover over this, we can see that it's referring to this right here. So we can type that in or we can click the drop down. 
we want to go ahead and select dollars label. For this, we want to change the text. And we can see here that this one uses the math. So we'll click on that. We'll click the plus add two together and we'll just drop it in there. And we'll copy exactly what we see above. We'll go ahead and type in dollars and we're good there. Let's go ahead and do the same thing for here. Set property is what we need. So let's go back to the UI controls. We'll click and drag that down. This one's the ticket label. So it's this one right here that we're affecting. We're changing the text. We need to add the math operator for plus. And we're going to type in tickets because we're updating that. And we're adding it in with quotation marks, space, tickets. And then don't forget to add your other quotation mark at the end. And let's see if this works. Let's go ahead and click run. Let's go ahead and click child ticket. And it works. It brought in the $8.50 for the child. And it went ahead and it added to the counter one ticket. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing that we did here for the child ticket. And we're going to go ahead and do that for the senior button. I'm not going to comment over this next section. I'm just going to speed through it so you can see me work on it. All right, now that we've done that, let's go to reset our app again. We'll click run. And this time we'll test our senior ticket. And when I did that, we can see that there's an error. And I'm going to leave this in the video just so you can see even teachers make mistakes. So we can see here I misspelled dollars. Again, this is not on purpose. This is just me mistyping. Let's go ahead and try it again now that I've updated that. All right, and we can see that that button now works. Before you hit finish to submit this, I want to encourage you that if you use this video to walk you through this, that you reset this part of the lesson through the version history and go back and try and recreate this without any help of my own. That way you feel comfortable with this. Again, the goal is not to get this right. The goal is for you to learn how to use these different parts of the features of code.org and building a program. So that when you have to create your own app, you have the tools necessary and you're not going to be fumbling around with different parts, not sure what to do or how to use these different tools that you have. Some things to note, it's okay that we're copying from this top and just building it and just using the toolbox to drag it in. Again, this is for familiarity for you just to start to get some practice. And just like how I made a mistake when working through this, you're probably going to make mistakes. That's okay. There's no shame in that. Just do your best. Don't give up. And once you do it all, your app should work just like mine is now.